welcome back to my channel. My name is Brigitte and today I'm walking you through our emergency food storage pantry. I'm gonna show you what I keep on hand for our family of four right now. And this is our backup backup pantry that has all of our emergency supplies, but I will also show you our regular pantry, which is downstairs at the end of this video. This storage unit is actually in my son's room. If you wanna see how we organized and split up our kids because they were sharing a room, then that video is linked down below. It was my latest video. But today I'm gonna to walk you through what I keep on hand and why. So we did get lighting in here, as you can see. There's these LED strips that are woven through the first one, two, three shelves on this. None on the bottom and none on the very top. And they actually carry through into, this is the mirror into the closet, which is super cool because we have no lighting in here and there is no lighting on the side of the room because the light is right there on the ceiling and it does not get past this panel, which is what blocks it from the rest of his room. So let me take you back behind here where it seems to be blue light, but these lights were less expensive than the other ones online. Actually, I can change them. Green. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna choose this one, I guess. So pardon the weird lighting, but that's the only way to see back here. Actually, I'll try to go get one light. Hold, please. Okay, that's much better. So I don't wanna redo the intro, so let's just get started with what we've got. So first things first, we're gonna start on the bottom row, which is all of our five gallon buckets. So in these, I have grains or beans, basically. So let me tell you which ones have which. This is all-purpose flour. This one is hard red wheat berries that I got from Azure. This one back here is hard white wheat berries. So the red wheat berries are more like for bread. The other ones are for pastries. This one is rolled oats. So we got a huge 25 pound bag um, for that. This one has basmati rice in it. The farthest one back has our like uh, in mylar bags, which I have to seal and oxygen absorbers, pinto beans. This one has salt. So this is 50 pounds, I believe, of salt in this five gallon bucket. And this one back here is pastry flour. Already ground up for like biscuits and such. So this is what's in our five gallon buckets. And these three gallon buckets actually don't have anything in them at the moment because whenever one of these five gallon buckets is almost empty and I wanna refill it, I'll pour the rest into here and then I can fill this up and that way I'm still using the oldest and not the newest, but I can fill this up and not have to go completely empty. So these two are empty. I probably am gonna get some all-purpose flour. This is actually almost totally out. And when we go to Costco in a couple of weeks, I'm probably just gonna get some more there. See, look, almost got. I do have some in the kitchen in a bucket, which I can show you. But we are running super low and I don't like to be that low on flour. Not that I couldn't grind my own with the wheat berries, but um, it acts differently and you would have to um, like sift out the bran um, which has a lot of nutritional value, but this is currently what I feed my sourdough starter with. So I like to keep a lot of that and it just makes easy baking when you want to whip up some bread and you don't want to grind it necessarily. So that's why I like to keep both. Um, also, we've got some hulled barley, which I use in our Ezekiel bread. We've got some rye uh, wheat berries here and then we've got some popcorn back there. We've got an empty container here. Uh, we've got some hulled millet, which I use in the Ezekiel bread, and I've got some buckwheat groats just for variety um, to have different things. That's actually gluten-free, so I could use that to make gluten-free things for some friends. And then over here, I've just got my canning supplies, um, which I want to start canning soon. I have not yet, but um, I think I'm gonna start with water bath canning. These are my Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers, um, which I haven't used all of them yet. And then hiding back here, I've got some extra pinto beans that I will use um, 
for different things, but they will last a while and they're sealed up right now. So I got some quartz and then I've got some like jelly jars, eight ounce ones, I think back there and some pint ones. So that's the bottom two. These are more very bulk items that need processing in order to use them. You can't just pull them off the shelf and then, you know, eat them. So they require some processing. This next shelf is um, a lot of my canned stuff. So this is just an emergency light <laughs> that I would keep up here for um, hurricane stuff. I'll move that for now. I have a lot of our canned fruits. So I have two rows of mandarin oranges and two rows of pineapple chunks with pineapple juice. And I actually do like the pineapple juice uh, in here because I will use it for my kefir when I want to have juice and say I've opened pineapples for the kids' lunches. Um, say we're running low on fresh fruit and I give them some of the canned fruit um, I like to use the juice um, and don't let it go to waste. So I use it for the kefir to sweeten it in the second ferment process. I've also got um, a row of peaches here. Actually, what is this? <gasps> this is supposed to go up here. Silly me. Oh, actually, because I when we redid this, I moved some of them. So actually, these need to go up here. Silly me. Now I know how much I have. So now I have three rows of mandarin oranges. I gotta clear that off there. Um, I have two rows of peaches here and I use the fruit juice from this also for my kefir, but I like um, putting them on these little things cause I got these from Aldi and I just took the whole tray thing so I can slide them in and out, but then I know how much I have. Um, and this is just a shoe organizer that I repurposed um, to use for the cans and the cans fit very nicely underneath. So I've got two rows of pears and you can see I've used two of them. I've got a row of pumpkin, uh, so I know I have how much of what. And I have three rows of this sweet corn. We don't keep a lot of canned vegetables because we would rather have them frozen. And, you know, I like to have a variety of each. Um, and I feel like if I get a lot of other vegetables in cans, we just won't eat them. But the corn, we will. So I have three rows of the corn. This is all my tomato sauces that are in these size cans. I do have tomato sauces over here, which I'll show you. But these are my, um, I have beans and then two things of potatoes. Um, and then I have some sweetened condensed milk uh, just to have. I do use it for yogurt, but have a bunch in the freezer from a big can that I opened. So I'm not touching these yet, but that's what I do use sweetened condensed milk for. And then I also have this bean can here um, that won't fit, which just bugs me, bugs me. Okay, um, I do have an extra tray up here, which I could put these salmons in, but I have uh, pink salmon. I have four cans for like salmon patties. And then I have some dried fruit, um, some raisins. So when we get the big thing from Costco, I'll keep one in the backup pantry downstairs and then I'll just put the other one up here with all of the fruit cans. Okay, but over here, I've also got some more tomato products. Um, so we got these, um, what are these, number 10 cans or whatever they're called? Um, they're very heavy, like six pounds. So I've got some uh, tomatoes back there. I've got a huge thing of tomato paste, which when I do open it, I will put in like snack size bags or the amount that I would need, like a six ounce type you know, because they usually come in little cans um, and you cannot possibly use that much in one time, but I'll put them in little bags and then I will flatten them and I will freeze them. And that way I only have to take out one little thing. It defrosts pretty quickly and I can use that tomato paste in recipes or for pizza sauce or whatever I'm going to use. But if I didn't do that, then all of this would just go to waste. Um, so freezing it after I open it is like the best option and will save you tons of time and money. So I've got two marinara sauces here. Oh. That when I open, I will do the same thing. I will freeze any extra that I'm not gonna use in bags in the freezer and then just take out as needed. Usually with this, I'll freeze about as much as uh, would go in a can because that way it makes it easier for recipes in the future. We've got a can of evaporated milk just to have and then some beets, which um, I don't know what I'm gonna use those for yet. Probably some recipe, but 
And then I've got some whole peeled tomatoes, which I'll do the same thing. I'll actually, when I open it, I'll probably blend them up with some seasonings and make a pizza sauce and just freeze it. Um, I've got these fire roasted red peppers, um, also with like the tomato stuff, even though it's not tomato. Moving up a shelf. Do you guys keep extra things on hand? Let me know in the comments below. I love to see how people prepare or um, keep stuff for their family, especially in these uncertain times because, you know, life is crazy. And that is why in the last year we have started building up a stockpile, just getting little things when we can and especially uh, things like that from our super secret place. Um, I just feel better that I could go a couple months at least without buying anything. And uh, of course we can go easily a month without buying things except for maybe fresh produce um, or milk or eggs if we needed to, but it definitely lets us um, choose how we want to spend our money because we get stuff on sale or bulk um, for good deals and that way I don't have to run to the store for things. I hate having to run to the store. I try to avoid it at all costs. I like to do bulk shopping. <laughs> so that is how, this is how we avoid all of that. Okay, so moving on. We've got in here, I've got just some extra sugar. So I've got some light brown sugar and some confectioner sugar, kind of like baking stuff. I've got some maple syrup right up there from Costco. We got that uh, last time we went, I think. And then we've got some extra honey. I do need to get more honey because we use honey for so many things. Um, so I'm gonna get some more at Costco when we go in a couple weeks. I've got some random things here, like some salsa con queso, which I love. If you saw my Aldi haul, you saw I got two salsas here because that's the best deal at Aldi. Just a spray thing to have on hand, um, an applesauce here, and then back here is a sun butter, um, big giant thing because the kids can't have peanut butter at school. So I got these two big things on Amazon for a pretty good price. I got an extra turkey pepperoni because I think they didn't have regular pepperoni and gosh that gets super expensive at the store so when I went to Aldi that was where I got this because they have the best deal on pepperoni so and when it's on pizza the kids don't really notice if it's turkey or not back here I've got um an extra virgin olive oil and then I've got a regular olive oil from Costco so I will use this in baking it doesn't have a strong olive oil taste but this I will use in salad dressings we've got a big thing of salt here which um, we probably won't buy salt for a while considering we have that huge 50 pound thing of salt but you know what you need salt for so many things and if you are not going to the store for things um, you definitely need salt and salt can preserve things. It can pickle things like with, you know, water and stuff. So definitely salt is one of those things to have on hand as well as sugar, hot sauce and some Tabasco sauce. I usually have this hot sauce and it was, was a two pack from Costco. And listen, all of these things we eat, like I'm not about to store things that we don't eat. That's why I don't want to get a lot of vegetables in cans because I well, we won't eat them. Like we would rather have um, salads or like fresh vegetables that are frozen. So just not canned. Unless I was going to can them myself for some reason, we probably won't eat them. And so this is all backup stuff that we buy regularly or that at least we will use that we like. So just an FYI. All right. I've got some banana peppers um, to have extra. We got some ketchup. We go through ketchup a lot uh, with the kids. I got some extra coconut aminos because uh, we try to stay away from soy because it's a hormone disruptor. I'm sure lots of things are. You could leave comments, yada, yada. I know, but we both feel strongly against soy. So we don't usually get soy sauce. We try to get the coconut aminos. I got some mustard here, some mayo here because we go through all those condiments. I got some jelly because we go through jelly. Um, I do want to start canning my own jelly and jams. So that is on the list of things I want to do this year. Do you guys have anything on your list of um, aspirations of things you want to do this year? New things to learn? Let me know in the comments below. All right, here's just a random box of things. So I've got um, extra throat coat teas. This is like our favorite tea when we have sore throats. Got some antibacterial stuff. We got some lighters. We got some magic erasers because, you know, children. And back here we've got some non-grocery like um, quart size freezer bags, uh, gallon bags, some crock pot liners because those are my fave. I hate cleaning crock pots. Um, we've got some extra... What am I trying to say? This is for the uh, vacuum sealer. Um, we've got some uh, vinegar 
I got two vinegars here and I have two in the laundry room plus the one I'm using. Um, but I use vinegar, vinegar for like everything. So, I mean, fabric softener, cleaning, pickling, like so many things. So vinegar is definitely something I don't want to run out of. I got some rubbing alcohol because this is also what we use for cleaning. I mix it with essential oil and dilute it with some water. Works great. And I can clean my granite with this because you're not supposed to clean granite with vinegar because it is porous and it will like ruin it. So I don't do that. I don't know why there's a random pen and scalpel. I mean, everyone has scalpels, right? It's not because I work in the hospital. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so that is that shelf. And now let me step up on this chair to show you what's up here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we've got some extra chips up here that I put in this basket so it's easy to pull down. And in this basket, what do I have up here? Oh, some cookies and oh, some graham crackers. Guys, if it wasn't for this camera, I couldn't see in here. I'd have to take it down. But we've got some graham crackers because they have such a good deal on these at Aldi. So I stocked up when I went, which was also in that haul. We got some peanut oil, um, which actually is almost out, but our fryer, we're not sure what to do with because it like blew a fuse and like like sealed, like it fused with the extension cord because it like overheated or blew or something, I don't know. But actually we just ordered a five gallon bucket of tallow to fry stuff in. So it's so much healthier for you and you can do your own research, but we feel great about using that fat and actually fat helps your brain to not have Alzheimer's when you're older because your brain runs on fat. Like the, let me get all sciency here on you. The neurons in your body have a myelin sheath around them, which is basically made of fat. So when that sheath, the covering on these neurons that send all the electrical signals and everything in your body, especially your brain, like deteriorates and uh, gets broken because there's no fat, then that's when it starts short circuiting and then like it'll die. So that's why people start to lose memory and all this other stuff. So if you keep that strong, um, it is much better. And you can look up studies on it because they are definitely out there on the interwebs. And um, it's actually kind of crazy when you look at um, the way the American diet has changed since we have cut out fat. So if you've never heard of this and it's totally new information to you, definitely start to go do some research because it's very fascinating. Okay, our favorite coffee. Uh, we got some Pete's Major Dickinson's blend, the whole bean, because we like to grind it fresh. And we also have this ground um, organic French roast that actually came by accident from Amazon and they refunded me the money, but I didn't have to send it back. So I just use that in like the French press or I will like grind it even further to use in the Nespresso. But anyways, you know, we don't wanna run out of coffee. So I've got some pasta up here, got some gluten-free spaghetti. We've got the Annie's mac and cheese, like different kinds here that we got in a big pack from Costco. Seaweed, um, what's this called? Little seaweed things, I don't like them. And we've got some crackers for soups and snacking and such. We've got the oh so bad for you Oreos, which we really use sparingly because they are so sweet. And when you get used to not having sugar, my gosh, these will take you out but you just can't substitute Oreos. Like there's nothing like them. So that's that. We have them for emergencies, hence the emergency food storage. So uh, we've got some crackers, um, the peanut butter crackers. We go through these pretty slowly because the kids can't take them to school, but they're good to bring snacks for after church and stuff like that. So we have those and they were from Costco and not expensive at all. And then we have some extra chips. I think there's actually a variety in here that I combined. So that gets refilled when I um, run out downstairs. So let's move downstairs so I can show you where I put the stuff when I pull it from our emergency food pantry area. And then all I have to do is really restock up here to make sure that we never run out of things. So let's go downstairs, shall we? Okay, so we came down the stairs and here's our under the stairs pantry slash closet. We use it as a pantry. And this is where we have all of our backup stuff.